good to be in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. We'd like to look for a few minutes this morning in uh, Matthew 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets for they come to you in sheep clothing, but in the woods, in the woods, or great woods. You shall know them by the fruit. Amen. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but every crooked tree brings forth evil fruit. Can a good tree bring forth evil fruit? Neither can a crooked tree bring forth good fruit. Amen. Every tree that brings forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit you shall know them. Not every one that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. First of all, in verse 15, we see the Lord warning us to beware, to uh, to uh, guard, to be careful, mm -hmm. alert, watchful, cautious, because uh, there are many, many false prophets Amen. in the world today. Yeah. And I believe as we get closer to the coming of our Lord and Savior, we'll see more and it'll continue to get worse. Right. Amen. Well. And then, uh, secondly, we see the warning of how they come to us. They come to us disguised, disguising their appearance, concealing what they really are. <coughs> and the Bible tells us they come to us as inwardly as raven wolves. That's if, if we stop to think about that a minute, we'll see what their real intent is for us and, uh, and what they're after. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then in First uh, John four, verse one, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, for they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Amen. And right here we see us him telling us the tribe spirits not to take them at the word a lot of times. I mean, you'd like to, you want to, when somebody, there's a lot of people that use, actually use the name of the Lord to get what they want. Right. And uh, when they come to you, especially if you've known them for a while, or, or kind of known them, you've met them, been around them some, you'd like to believe that, you know, they're truthful, but uh, as we see here in First John 1, it tells many false prophets. And I believe that's what we're seeing in our country today. Mm. Many times throughout the Bible, it tells us to be not deceived. Amen. You know, and we know we have to be cautious and like, watchful, and especially in our service to the Lord, that uh, you know, we're not let off and we're not uh, took places that we don't need to go and, and associate with people that we don't need to associate with just because they say they're something or not. Uh, several years ago, we was, uh, just got exhausted with the kind of help we was having to use. Uh, it was, uh, they'd come to the house in the middle of the night wanting money and just, uh, just the wrong kind of help and we just got exhausted. And I had a Christian man come to me several times and offer me a job and I knew the guy, but he lived about an hour away and I didn't know him that well and uh, offered to go in business with him. And uh, and it sounded good. And uh, he was a smooth talker and uh, he put on a good front. But throughout it all, the help we had earlier was probably better than what I had dealing with him. Right. And uh, I mean, it seemed like a good fit. He was a uh, neat lumber, I was in the lumber business. And uh, so we had a few meetings and I went to work for him. and. Uh, he used a lot of used lumber, so I done a lot of trucking, spent a lot of time trucking and getting everything ready and 
was going to move his equipment to my house so we could uh, rebuild and do what he needed done. But uh, as it went on, I could see, you know, he uh, he done a lot of traveling in his other business, and he had these big contracts he just couldn't take care of. So mm -hmm. I was going to take care of the contracts, but every time that something come up, he had an excuse for it, and they'd always the money was never there. There was always an excuse on that. We had to wait on it, and finally, after probably a year of dealing with this, I went to carry some of his, his trailer on equipment that we used in the trucking and I carried it back home. And there was an older gentleman from his church there waiting on me. And as usual, he wasn't there. Mm. And uh, he'd asked me, he said, I'd heard of you, but I had never met you. And he told me, uh, he said, well, I'm just gonna give you a little piece of information. He said, I go to church with him. I know him a long time. And he said, I, I've warned him about his business practices and what he's doing. He said, I've owned a lake house for years. We're getting ready to retire. And he said, he comes to my house. We go out to eat. And he said, once he got the lake house bought, he won't even talk to me anymore. And he said, you know, I've warned, warned him that, you know, the kind of life he's living and, uh, and the things he's doing, that he could very easily lose everything he's got. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe we see that in 1 Timothy 6.10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. While which some tell the actor they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Amen. And I believe that's what the situation was here. He just uh, he couldn't get enough money and he didn't mind who he had to step on or what he had to do to get it. Right. And uh, about a year ago, this has probably been 10 years ago when this happened, and about a year ago, a man that lived close to him told me, he said, did you see the 6 o'clock news? I said, no. He said, well, your buddy made the 6 o'clock news. He said that, uh, I don't really think he had done anything wrong, but he's at the wrong place at the wrong time, and the people that he was uh, dealing with got in some trouble, and he lost everything he had. No, oh, man. So, uh, what the brother that went to church with him warned him wanted to come in church. Amen. And we see him back in Matthew 7, 15. Verses 16. You shall know them by their fruit. And again, in verse 20, what for by their fruit you should know them. So we can know them. Amen. And if I'd have been a little more cautious, and if I'd have been a beware like the, the Bible tells us, I could have probably seen more of this before I got into it. And then in uh, James 3, 11. at the same place, sweet water and bitter, mm -hmm. fig tree, my brother and bear olives, and either a vine fig, so can no fountain. Both yield salt water and fresh. Amen. And I guess I know it did. A few years ago, I was working in the woods, and I had a neighbor come to me, and he was a deacon of a, a so-called Baptist church. I, I hate to call that church, but... And, uh, and I've known him for years, and uh, he came to the woods where I was working, he had another man with him, and he could not make a sentence without cursing and mm -hmm. using bad language, and I was just, at first I couldn't believe it. But I thought about it several times, I've known the man for years, and uh, he had a man with him that, for all accounts, all I know, that he was lost. And what kind of testimony would that man pay right. to the guy that was with him? and, and It'll be a stomach block. He, he laid a stomach block at the least in front of him Amen. for the Lord to work in his life. And as we look at this lesson this morning, I'm not judging any of these men's men that we've talked about. I'm just looking at the fr fruits that they produce. Amen. That's it. And uh, in James 8, 
the ones is but the tongue can no man tame it is unruly evil full of deadly poison wherein or with bless we God even the Father and therefore curse men which made up the similitude of God out of the same mouth receiving blessings and cursings my brethren these things ought not to be so Amen and in this day we see a lot more than we should in our business uh, we see people from all over the country and uh, one of the things we see over and over is they're members of a so-called mega church mm -hmm. and uh, the younger ones they don't even go that much they'll tell you you know just pretty much when it's convenient for them and, and it's it's and this day and time in that kind of church it's you know nothing said about it and some of the older people that go to church there they was raised on sound doctrine but they've been let off and right. seem to be okay with everything that's going on there all they want to tell you about is how much money the church has and how much uh, how many members they have and uh, all the their big gymnasium and, mm -hmm. and what all they have for the kids and but you hear very little of the word of the lord there you go when they're talking about it you don't hear what we need to be hearing and i think in second second timothy four three may give us the answer to this For the time to come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I know a lot of older people, that I know that they were raised under sound doctrine and, and in sound church, but it's convenient for them. I talk, right. talk to them about it. It's, it's close to my house. It's convenient. It's where my friends go to church. It's, uh, when you question them about things going on, well, it don't really matter. The Lord understands. Mm. Well, the Bible tells us the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, you know. His word has not changed. Just because they've changed, His word has not changed. Yeah. <laughs> they are looking for a, a church to go along with their lifestyle. There you go. What they want to do. Somebody to tell them what they want to hear. Serving the Lord is not always going to be convenient and easy and close. But also, if we want to, we want to be known by our fruits also. That's it. We want to be known by the, the right kind of fruits. The fruits found in Galatians 5, 22. Fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen. And they that are Christ have crucified themselves in the flesh with afflictions and lust. And we we live in the Spirit, but it's also walk in the Spirit. Let's not be desirous of vain glory, but broken one another, hymning in one another. These are the fruits that we want to be known for. Amen. I fail my Lord daily, and I'm, but I do look to Him, and I, I seek to have a closer walk with Him, and uh, to spend more time with Him because we will be drawn off by the world and by the, the false prophets and the false teachers of this world, trying to tell you that it's all right. The Lord understands. The Lord understands that you know we need to make money. Well. We need to seek to be in the house of the Lord. When Amen. When, yeah. it, when the doors open, we need to seek to have a closer walk because when it's all said and done, none of the things of this world really matter. You're right. Other than yeah. I realize we have to make a living and we have to take care of our families, but uh, seeking to be rich or seeking to have more than your neighbor has or seeking the vain things of this world don't amount to anything. Amen. It's all said and done. We want to live the right kind of life with the right kind of testimony. Uh, diligently seeking to serve the Lord and to have a closer walk with Him in our everyday lives. I realize this is a short lesson, but maybe it's been a blessing to you. It's uh, 
<laughs> it's been a struggle for me. You don't always get to teach what you would want to teach you. The Lord kept bringing me back to it. I had something else. I kept questioning the Lord, and He kept bringing me back to it. <laughs> so uh, we want to teach what He has to teach. That's it. Oh. Amen. Amen.